Welcome to the Corner Cafe. About the things. And welcome to the Corner Cafe. I'm Rachel Maines, and hey, it's a joy to be with you. And I have one of my really good friends, Latan Murphy, on the show. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, I love your coffee mug. What what are you drinking there, Latan? I have a little hot tea because it's kind of late here in Tennessee. So yeah. I, I didn't think I needed another cup of coffee, but uh, yeah. <laughs> what does it say on the coffee mug? It says "love ya." It says "love ya, mean it." <laughs> Cute. Of course, you'd have the cutest coffee cup, <laughs> a coffee <laughs> mug. <laughs> uh, so, Latan, you've been on the show before. It's been a while. Um, for those of you who remember Latan, um, she is an author. She is a speaker. Um, gosh, you do so many different things, Latan. Author, author, speaker, and what else? Oh, m- mainly those are my two focused areas right now. I do some decorating as well, but right now I, I really love speaking into lives about the things that I've learned in my journey. Um, so, and uh, currently about my recent book, His Strength for Joy. So. Yes, and I was I haven't read the book yet, but I'm so excited to talk about this book because um, we were talking on the phone. Joy, a lot of people I think um, think of happiness and they think that's what joy is. But it's I've been joyful even when I shouldn't be. Um, you know, loss of a loved one or I'm going through a really hard time. It was actually his joy that got me through that trial and that hard time. And you said that perfectly, that joy is really a byproduct of something way bigger than us. Right. It's really, it's really part of God's character. And uh, we hear the Bible verse almost in a cliche way from Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. But what does that really mean and how do we really apply it? Because like you said, the average person, myself included, spent much of my life thinking about joy as, as happiness. And it is so not that. Um, And then I remember being in my kitchen one night and thinking, what is my next book title? And I began to think about the season of life that I was in and how I needed a sense of strength beyond my circumstances. And that Bible verse came to mind, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I started thinking, what does that mean? Like for the first time, like what does that mean? Right. So the joy of the Lord tells us that that is something that he embodies within himself, then it began to register with me that joy is actually part of God's character. And as we become partners with him in life, then he gifts to us a part of who he is. Oh, that's beautiful. It really, really changed things for me. My whole perspective. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, a lot of times I think, uh, we read the scriptures, um, or we hear um, a fellow Christian talk about the scriptures, and it sounds amazing, and we're like, yeah, I'm in, but we don't practically really understand. I mean, it's going to take a whole lifetime, even if we lived, you know, 200 years, you know, we wouldn't fully um, embrace everything there is to learn. It's a constant renewal and learning, but I think, you know, what a lot of us need help with is just Okay, that sounds amazing, but how does that practically work in my life? Well, for me, I think it is the realization and the comforting thought of there is nothing that will enter into my life or yours that we have to experience alone. And right. when you think of that piece, that component, that is a promise that's given to us in relationship with God. And so what that means for you and I, it doesn't mean that our circumstances will change. It doesn't mean that scenarios will be peachy, that the, everything <laughs> will line up and just be perfect suddenly. But what it means is that we have a perfect power of heaven that is active, engaged, fully focused, very attentive, very present on us and on what we are going through. And for me, even as I speak that out loud, I feel the joy rising up inside of me. Right. Um, That's beautiful. The title is, is God is finding God powered fulfillment. And if you think about everything else that we look to in life to try to experience joy, we come up short and empty 
of fulfillment. Right. That's beautiful, Latan. You know, one of the things I was, I was thinking too, um, and with all emotions, we have such a plethora of emotions that the Lord has made. Um, we have, you know, joy and then happiness, but then we have over here, sadness, you know, yeah. anguish, all that anger, you know, and just the fact that how could we know joy, for example, if we never experienced um, sadness? or loneliness, you know, all the emotions that, that are the antithesis of each other, you know, the spectrum. So you have joy over here and you have sadness over here. Um, but, you know, that's interesting to think about. I think it's almost uh, one of those brain uh, freezes, if you will, if you try to think about eternity, <laughs> you know, like yeah. think about eternity. I'm like, I can't comprehend. Likewise, not having sadness, for example, all the negative emotions, then we have what we consider positive emotions. How would we know joy? You know, mm -hmm. if we don't go through a trial, how do you know joy? And I think there's a lot of validity there. Um, but for those listeners who are, whatever season of life you're in, whether everything right now in your life seems to be going along just great and you really aren't experiencing something sad, as Rachel said, or something where you're finding yourself depressed or in a grief season or in a financial loss season or lonely and longing for a relationship, whatever it is that you feel you're, you're lacking something. When that direct line from us God is drawn and we realize the intimacy that we can experience and we begin to pursue that intimacy, that's the key, then that's where the joy comes from. And the joy is actually not at all based on any experience that we have. We can be happy about things as we talked about earlier, but to have real lasting joy is so connected to how we connect ourselves to God. Right. It's deep and wide and big. And, and I feel like this conversation is as deep and wide and big as the Grand Canyon. Right. And we could get a group of people together and probably everybody would have a different angle on what they think joy is. But in the end, when we leave this world, you and I both know, like, we all live our lives and we move along and we have different experiences and we see the world through different lens than another person. But in the end, we stand before one person and that is God. Right. And so that direct line then ends with us and him. And right. what does he have to say about me? Like, we, we allow joy to be stripped away from us so easily by a simple word that somebody spoke about us. You know? Right. <laughs> For those of us who are words people, that's a real temptation. Yeah. I, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's beautiful, Latan. Um, you know, one of the things you were saying, and, I, you know, having that direct line. So one of the things that would be obvious is reading his word um, to get a direct line to him, prayer. Yes. Um, is there anything else that you do practically to feel like you're in that direct line with the Lord? Lately, it has been for me worship. Um, yeah. Play music. Like get in, get in your happy place. If if music speaks to you, then put the music on. Put it on loud and find the genre of music that speaks into your soul and feeds your soul and soak in that. Yeah. Um, music has a way of lifting us, especially worship music has a way of literally lifting us up above the circumstances of our lives and helping us to have a new and fresh perspective on where we are in life, what we need to do next. Like we can, we, I, there have been times that I've just been unable to pray or even ask God for joy. But if I praise him and I begin to worship him and if I begin to thank him for where I am now instead of where I wish I was, right, everything changes. Right. And suddenly what I felt was empty and depleted feels full and, and joyful and hopeful. Yeah. Right. 
That's beautiful. Yeah. You know, one of the things I've been focusing on recently is just uh, our thought life. Obviously, the Bible has a lot to say about thought life. Mm -hmm. But if we're in right believing, then we will have joy. Mm -hmm. And um, if we notice that we're, you know, feeling sad or um, feeling negative, you know, it's going to be traced back to our thoughts. So if we can, and then the Bible says capture your thoughts. So if we can capture that thought and have right believing, which is belief right. in the scriptures, then of course the natural thing that will happen will be joy because we'll have right be believing behind our thoughts. Um, do you have any uh, uh, thing to say about that? I, I just, it's an interesting thing to talk about our thoughts and capturing them. I do actually have a lot to say about that because recently when I was experiencing some really hard losses in my life, some loved ones who passed away way too soon. Um, and I could not sense joy, feel joy, didn't want to look for joy. Everything felt so sad and so watered down in life. The things I used to enjoy didn't feel the same. Um, and I began to realize that my mind was a very, very powerful thing. We don't even realize how powerful right. our minds are. Right. Um, we know that God's word, there are so many Bible verses. If you just even do a search about the mind, tons of Bible verses will come up that point us back to how important it is that we guard our mind, that we watch our mind, that we um, ask for the mind of Christ, that it's so many. Um, so I would encourage your listeners to do that. But also I began to realize that if my mind was that powerful, then what my mind perceives, my heart will believe. Right. And there were many truths that I had taken to myself that were not real truth, but false narratives that right. he was trying to make me believe. And there is nothing more joy robbing than that. When we believe the lies that the enemy tells us, and we take it into our mind and we lock it into our hearts, then the overflow of our lives and how we move and decisions that we make are often based on those two things. So if our minds are as powerful as we're talking about, and you look up how we can literally reprogram the, the neuro pathways in our mind right. by what we listen to, the people we surround ourselves with, the conversations that we have with others, that we draw that truth into ourselves. We are literally reprogramming our minds in a direction that's either going to be joyful and, and lead us to a life of joy, or it can literally be a very toxic path that we allow ourselves to go down that becomes more toxic. Right. Yeah. I love all that you said there. Um, uh, I think, yes, what we surround ourselves with, who, who we're hanging out with, um, what we're listening to, what we're watching. And lately, too, practically speaking, what I've been doing, if I have a thought um, that I, you know, know is not true, you know, you capture it and you can just say, okay, so here's that thought. I acknowledge it. It's not something like, a, oh, I'm, you don't beat yourself up for the negative thoughts. It's just like, okay, I'm capturing this thought. I'm acknowledging it. But what's opposite of this? So say, for example, um, you know, people struggle with God being mad at them. Maybe they didn't have a good earthly father. I did, so I never really struggled with that. But just using an example, uh, believing that, hey, that God doesn't love me. Or if you have that thought, you know, or he's mad at me. Well, you can take that thought and say, hey, okay, I, I hear your thought. <laughs> I acknowledge you. But let's um, think of it this way. What does scripture say? You know, and then start to feel it with other thoughts that are truth, you know, just practically speaking, reading the word, saying it out loud about how much um, the Lord loves us is a good place to start. But we can do that with every single thought. You know, it was interesting what you said, um, how powerful the mind is. I got two thoughts on that. Uh, first of all, if we're feeling scared, you know, we could start actually, our heart can start racing, right? So the mind triggers the the things in the body, like the heart and all this, these other things. So it is yeah. very, very powerful. One yeah. point, and I'd like you to talk about that. And then another too is, um, Adam and Eve fell because, um, they, they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It started in the mind. They fell 
in the mind too of course we fell physically and spiritually but it started with the knowledge of of good and evil which is interesting so interesting yeah so so there's so much packed into that one part right um, first of all they they did not recognize the presence of god as fulfillment in their lives Right. They began to look to other places and long for other things. And their minds began to believe that there was something better than the experiences that God had for them, the future God had for them, the purpose God had for them there. And isn't that what happens to us? Right. Yes. Perfect. Well, I'm going to go to a break real quick, Latan. So hold those thoughts. And we will be right back. Alleviate the stress of not knowing what your child or children might be taught in public schools. Christian Home Educators of Colorado wants to help you take back control of your child's education. You don't trust the public school system, so put your children on the right path. And you can be reassured and confident in your child's education when you work with the Christian Home Educators of Colorado. They help you give your children the education that is customized education for them. And that is the best way for your child to receive the most out of their education. So give your children the best homeschooling education in Colorado. With over 30 years in homeschooling education, CHEC offers your children the structure and the Christian education they deserve. To learn more about Colorado homeschooling, visit chec.org. Hi friends, Rachel Maines here, and if you don't know already, I am the Operations Manager for AM670 KLTT, and we have a special opportunity for you. We're partnering with GFA World again, and this time we're helping to provide the Holy Scriptures to those in Africa and Asia. There's actually millions of people in Africa and Asia who don't have access to God's Word. So would you partner with us and give today? It's super simple. All you have to do is go to our website, 670KLTT.com, and scroll down and click on the scrolling banner that says Give God's Word. You can also give them a call at 855-571-9776. So give today. You know, I hear these precious stories of these new believers who get access to Holy Scriptures, and then they wrap it in a special cloth, and they place it in a special place in their home. So it truly is precious and wonderful for them to receive God's holy word. So once again, go to our website, 670KLTT.com. And thanks for your gift. And welcome back to the Corner Cafe. And I've been having a great conversation with my good friend, Latan Murphy. And it looks like you're enjoying that tea, Latan. It's so delicious. It's a, it's a blueberry tea. Mmm. Delicious. Yeah. You know, um, next time you visit Colorado, we'll have to go to In Tea. It's one of my favorite spots, and they have oh, so you. many varieties of teas. So thank yes, and they have so a blueberry cool. jasmine, which is amazing. Oh, oh I would so, love that. Yeah, that yeah. sounds so fun. Yes, put me down. Fun, yes. yes. Yeah, and it's a free advertisement for NT. I highly recommend listeners and people go. watching the video go to NT, support local businesses That's in downtown right. Littleton, Colorado. You gotta um, help the people out, right? Right. Yeah. Um, but Latan, I just really enjoy this conversation about joy and um, mm -hmm. taking a look at the word joy, realizing it is different than happiness and realizing too, you can experience joy even in the most troubling times because he is our source. Yes. He, he is our source. And, you know, really this book is so relatable because there are 10 women that I've talked about here some of whom really were subjected to other people's fears and worries and concerns. And out of that, their lives could have been left really weak and lifeless and empty, but instead they chose to press into their faith. And I'm sure that just like you and I, it doesn't happen overnight. We are very human and we all struggle with very joyless situations and circumstances, Rachel. Mm -hmm. but yes. it's a journey and it's a process and it's a journey worth taking if we will just go with God if we'll just keep our eyes on him and realize that he loves us so much more that we can even comprehend 
We cannot even conceive of the kind of love that he has for us, that he would not just want to be on his throne in heaven, but he wanted to gift himself to us. Right. So that we could take on so many different pieces of his nature and his character that we could never, ever have without him, without his presence. So I can be going through some of the worst situations and if I really reset my mind to do what we've said prior to this, to worship, to read, to press in the good people that really encourage me, that are life-giving forces in my life, um, right. that I'm really intentionally focusing on drawing truth into my life, according to God's word, what he has to say about me, not what other people have to say. Right. And I have really repositioned myself to experience his strength as my joy and also more importantly to experience god powered fulfillment in the daily where to where i'm not just floundering and i'm not just being tossed about everywhere by some something emotional right you know? yeah that's beautiful and you know, so we've been talking on the phone because we're good friends. You know, I'm going through a season of just learning about emotions. And it's fascinating to me, as I mentioned previously, that the Lord, he made all emotions, mm -hmm. you know, the good, the bad, and that um, it's okay it to okay. feel every emotion because he made them. So mm -hmm. we don't have to push any emotions away. If you're feeling sad, feel sad. You yeah. know, if you're feeling angry, feel angry. I do not sin in anger and like punch your neighbor, if you're mad at them, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend punching up, punching them, but you can feel angry, you know? Um, but then he made the other emotions too, where say you're going through sadness, well, feel sadness, but then allow yourself to feel his joy to, um, kind of come in and help that gap, if you will, you know? So, uh, I think it's very healthy to, um, to be able to process emotions, to be able to feel it, but then always, of course, go to the truth of God's words. Because as we were saying earlier, we need to capture our thoughts because mm -hmm. if we have wrong thinking, we're going to start feeling terrible, mm -hmm. just how it is, you know? So yeah. um, it's, you know, being truthful, feeling emotions, but then also taking your thoughts captive so you can agree with this truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a time I'm thinking as you're talking about just how true everything you just shared is so powerful because there are seasons of our lives and I was thinking of a time when I had some words spoken over me that were very hurtful and I took those into myself as if it was the absolute truth and if you knew the character of the person who said those things you would say to me Latina why in the world would you listen to that but right. we all have moments in our lives where we are walking literally in weakness I would mm -hmm. say a, a big part of our lives we can spend living out in weakness instead of realizing that we have this authority given to us. We are daughters of the Most High God, and mm -hmm. we are gifted His character, His nature, His presence, His strength. He wants so much to give us out of the abundance of all that He is and all that we're not. And I think so many times we think it's for other people, but we are not willing to really grab hold of it and claim it as ours. Right. Right. I hope that makes sense to you. It's, it's really that simple. Um, it doesn't mean that we'll have all the goo goo ga ga feelings overnight. We're not going to, uh, but it does mean that we can be consistent, spiritually mature, joy filled women and men of God that are unshaken by our circumstances that we know the character of God enough that we know that if this thing didn't work out or that thing didn't work out or the other thing that we've been so devastated by, we can trust the character of God and know his heart for us is a heart that has good intentions and good purpose yet to be fulfilled. He's not finished yet. Yeah, Latan, there's so many things, um, that we can do to unpack what you just said. Um, but one of the things I, I've been thinking about lately is, 
you will, there's so many different life situations um, where we want control over stuff. But if we release control and realize, like you said, that God has the best of intentions and um, he works everything out for our good, even when we wanted to go this course and it doesn't. And if we let go of control and have the abundance mindset, which, which I believe the Heavenly Father wants us to believe in, it could work out anyway. So maybe it didn't work out, you know, my number one option over here, but just to be open to, no, but there is a plethora of options that the Lord can do, you know, whatever area of our lives that we're struggling with. You know, there's so many different options with God, you know, all is possible, he says. He he's not just the plan A or B or C. He's he's all alphabet. He right. He has a, a different plan for us in every season. And when we think we've ruined everything and messed up, that's when he says, "You know what? I am the God who is able to make everything that you think is a mess into your greatest message." Right. And when we were talking about emotions earlier, in an earlier interview with someone today, David came to mind. And how David's emotions were all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the very thing that we would look at ourselves and say, girl, you need to pull it together. Or, <laughs> you know, right. like, you're a mess. You're a hot mess. Right. We think about, you know what? God so might funny. be writing a few chapters in our lives, too. Like he right. was in David's life. Like, right. I mean, that gives me a lot of joy just thinking about that. that he I know. All of it. You know? Yeah, I think it's a good thing to read the Psalms often because you do see the ups and downs, you know. Yeah. And he's a man after God's own heart. And um, yeah, he was, I mean, he was a hot mess. You know, that's hilarious. Um, but see, that's the thing about emotions that I've been learning is you got to let yourself go through them, you, you know. Do. And God made them. Um, the only caution I would say is uh, question your belief systems in terms of if you're staying in like a dark place uh, to take captive your thoughts and make sure it's in alignment with the word. Make sure your thoughts are in alignment with the word. Mm -hmm. So there's the truth of like being a real and not like shoving emotions away and just saying you're fine when actually you're not fine when you're That's going right. through a hard time. You need to experience emotions. But then the other side of that also is making sure that our thought life aligns with truth and and if the only prayer your listeners can pray if somebody out there is going through a really hard time right now and they are just so done with the christian east talk and all the yeah. damped out things that they feel in their hearts they have heard it time and time again and every person that they thought was a believer let them down or they let themselves down uh i just want to encourage you today that you know, God is the God who sits with you in your pain. He is the God who will sit right with you as long as you need to sit in it. Right. And then he will move you out. If your heart will just stay wide open to his presence. And sometimes when I've been in those situations, the only prayer that I could think to pray was God take every thought that I have captive by your power. Mm. And that one prayer is so powerful, Rachel, because if you ever find yourself swinging to a dark place, that prayer is going to keep you steady. It is literally the plumb line that will rescue you every single time, every single time. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Latan. Um, it's been great to have, in, have you back on the Corner Cafe. And I just want to uh, give the listeners your contact info and let them know how they can get your book. Yes. Um, so let me show you a picture. This is the cover for you to recognize. Beautiful. You Thank you. Thank you. You can order it on Barnes & Noble website or Amazon. Um, you can find me at my website, um, which Rachel actually built. She did a great job at latanmurphy.com. And I would love to hear from you guys. You can email me through the website. And I would absolutely love to hear which one of the 10 women here you found most um, encouraging and that which one of them helped you to experience his joy and um, his strength. Well, thank you, Latan. And also, yeah, when you go to the website, listeners, um, she writes blogs as well. And Latan's a writer, so she writes blogs, and you can keep up to date on her um, books. And uh, what's the next book, Latan? 
you know, I've been praying about that. Pray with me about that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't wait to, to know, you know? Yeah. So, that's, yeah. I love how you just, you just wait for the, for the Lord to tell you. It's not like you're just kind of, you're running with your own ideas. I love that you just kind of sit and wait. That's beautiful. Oh, I want his big idea. I just think that if, if we wait on him, whether he, whether we're writing a book or not, our lives are a book being written by his hand. Amen. And if oh, we that's wait on hearing him, then he's gonna, he has a way better story and a way better narrative than we could ever, ever conjure up. So I want that, I want God's idea to be my idea. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you, Latan. You have such a beautiful heart, and you always bless us when you come on the Corner Cafe. We're going to have you. you back, okay? Thank you. I've loved our time together, always. <laughs> Me too. All right. Well, um, thanks for tuning in to the Corner Cafe. We're going to see you at the cafe next week.